Hi, this is John Starmer. I'm the Director of Education here at Cumulus Technologies, and this is our Bash Basics course, and it is focused on the commands and tricks and tips that you will probably know, need to know or want to know uh, if you're working in a cloud computing environment. It's not intended to be uh, in-depth introduction to, to Bash. It's really how do you use it? What are the commands that you would want to use uh, in a cloud system? Just in case you're not familiar what, with what Bash is or what a shell is, uh, I think it's helpful to do a little bit of a level set. Like I said, we won't get too deep into the weeds here. But Bash is a shell. Uh, it's a program. Then there are other shells you can see here uh, on the main page for, for Bash. It re references the corn shell and the C shell. There's a Z shell. There, there's a number of other shell programs out there uh, that have varying compatibilities with different operating systems. However, you're going to find Bash on most Linux operating systems, and, and this is one reason why it's so important for cloud uh, systems, because Linux is so pervasive these days in cloud computing. Um, it's also available uh, by default on Mac. You can also get it on uh, Windows 10 at least, we assume subsequent versions. Uh, so it really is found everywhere, and it's even if it ends up not being uh, the, the shell that you use primarily, it's good to have some familiar, familiarity with it. Um, a shell program in general is a program that allows you to interact with other programs. So uh, it it's really it provides an, a text-based interface, and it lets you... Um, it serves as a tool in your toolbox to get things done um, through a command line. You can do things like create and move files. Uh, you can download and run programs, write and execute scripts. This is one of the powers of Bash, and I, I should probably mention at this point that there are a couple of ways you interact with it. There's there's the interactive mode, which is what we will primarily be doing in terms of typing a command and getting a result. Uh, something will happen as a result of you running a command. But you can also run scripts, and those scripts are powerful because, again, in the cloud computing context, um, you can start to automate things. And scripts can be multiple bash commands in series. That's effectively what a script would be. Um, and, and these can then do things for you without any uh, intervention. So this is the non-interactive mode. Since we're here on the, the main page, it is worth noting that there's a lot of documentation. There is a uh, also a bash page separate from the new bash page. Um, lots of good content out there if you want to dig into what the, the, the details of how does this bash thing work, how do these shell things work. This is a great place to get started. So as you're <coughs> typing in a terminal, uh, the commands that you're typing uh, line by line are recorded in a session log called the history. <coughs> and in the simplest way, you can access it simply by scrolling up or down. And here we can see some of the previous commands that I ran here. Um, and if you... I, I just... <coughs> used the left arrow or you could do a right arrow and now I can edit this in this case I did nothing because I'm not in the right place to mess with it um, but here in, as I'm scrolling up um, we can list the files or I can now go up and say I want to clear this. And simply by uh, so, you know scrolling up to that command and hitting return, you can run that command again. Now, um, you can also run history, which spits out the entire history. Lots of stuff. Um, or you can say, you know what? I want the last, say, 10 commands that I ran simply by appending that to the history command. And that's a little bit more manageable, especially if you have some sense of how far back you need to go. Um, let's say we hit, let's say we hit uh, ls again, and clear Or let's do ls and if we wanted to for whatever reason repeat that command we can actually go with a double bang and it runs the last command that you ran 
and that's a simple way to <coughs> access the last thing that you ran. Um, you can also, with a bang and a string, you now can access the last command that you ran with that uh, with that string. So in this case, I went down a directory, and it it runs that again. And actually, if we do history, you can see. Well, now the the most recent one was is right there, which was the one I ran before. Um, you can also, if you wanted to, say, hey, I want to run um, run the specific number. So I can go, uh, I want to do a clear, and let's do 383. And it runs that command after you run a history. So rather than having to scroll up, you can just ac access this in that way. You can also do a control R. So if we go control R, now you get a reverse I search. And now if you continue to use the control R, you start going back. And in this case, I had uh, entered a, a ta.md as, as the string that I wanted to search for. But we could also go CD. And now it's picked up the CD. And again, if I go Control R, it'll go back and say, "All right, well, where, what have you used CD on?" And then whenever you get to the uh, command that you want to run, again, you can either left or right. Uh, if I just went left arrow, and now I can edit this. I went down on directory. <laughs> so here, CD. <coughs> but now I could again uh, control R, look for CD. Uh, now I can go back to CD dev, and I should now have the dev folder. So now I was able to go to dev without having to type it in. So some um, nice ways to get back to commands. Um, these were very trivial sorts of commands if you are running uh, things where you're typing in long strings. This can be really helpful. Uh, and as you get used to it, some of the shortcuts like the, the bang, 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 um, will give you easy ways to jump back to prior commands and things like that um, and can just save you a little bit of time. So up to now, we've been working with Bash in interactive mode. So we <coughs> type a command on, on the command line uh, at, at the terminal prompt, and we get some sort of functionality uh, returned to us. In the non-interactive mode, we can actually run a script, which potentially um, runs multiple different uh, Bash commands in sequence. Um, and you, we really see the power of Bash as really a small scripting but programming language so we can these scripts are really small programs um, so a lot of power uh, if you're doing repetitive tasks this is a great way to automate things if you're um, trying to you know dealing with some sort of a, a f file format that has characters you want to get rid of you can tell run a little bash script that will get rid of those characters um, removing spaces lots of very simple things but again um, there are also ways to have Bash do very uh, complicated things as well and, and automate those for you. Um, in, if you don't already have a uh, bin directory in, in your uh, home directory, it's a good place to keep your shell scripts uh, all in, in one place. Uh, let's go ahead, or we're already in it, so let's see what we have in here. <laughs> And here's the little L-O-S-H. So let's use a bash uh, command and see what's in there. And we can see <coughs> bash scripts start with this hashtag bang backslash bin backslash bash. Um, because there's a hashtag at the beginning, that line is ignored. Same goes for this, the second line, which is uh, just a comment. But that first line 
is recognized by Bash as telling it that this is uh, a little Bash script that we want you to run. Um, and then we'll echo hello world is just telling it to print out hello world. So let's go ahead and see if we can't run that. And it did exactly what we asked it to do. Um, let's create our own script here really quick. So again, we need to put that first little Again, backslash bash, that's now we're telling it that we have a script. Um, and this is just a, a demo bash script. Echo. Now let's go and quit it. Oh, let's write and quit it. And now let's run hello to. Uh oh, what happened? Well, that previous uh, script which I had um, had created actually was you have to change the permissions so that it's actually an executable file. So the way we do that is we need to change the permissions. You okay, and let's use our history here and run it again. And change the permissions, made it so that the the bash was allowed to run it, and it worked as as advertised. Um, so just a really simple introduction into how. Um, how a bash script works and we'll get more into what we can actually put into those scripts uh, in more interesting ways in addition in the next few sections so uh, one of the things that's useful to do in bash is to create variables and um, those can then be plugged into scripts and and called throughout the script so let's go ahead and uh, edit our um, our hello script. And in this case, let's say, um, so to create a variable, you name the variable, uh, and let's call it world. And then we, again, can use our echo command hello but in this case we're going to call the variable that we just defined and in this case you'll see uh, you put a dollar string in front of the uh, variable when you're calling it but when you're initially defining it you don't need to do that so let's go ahead and save this and let's call our hello script And there you go. We we told it uh, we can see we didn't say echo hello world anymore. We said echo and then grab that second piece as as a variable and spit it out. Um, so in this case, uh, oh, I, one one last thing is to say uh, when you're defining variables, don't put in spaces. So if you say who. that will not register as a variable. No spaces between uh, the, the variable, the equal sign, and the variable that you're defining. Um, so you can declare it in your file and then call that back programmatically um, in, in the script, but you can also have some user interaction. Um, so let's go ahead and 
edit our, our uh, script again. And in this case, let's see. Let's ask the user a question. And then we can use the read function to define the variable. So now, after that question, it's going to wait for an input. You're going to provide that input, or the user is going to provide the input. And now we can take that dynamically defined variable and again loop it back into the response. Let's go ahead and save that. Run our script here. Who are you? Okay, I'm John. Hello, John. So um, hopefully you're starting to see the, the, the prospect of some power here in using uh, the bash shell scripts um, for, for a number of different reasons. We're just getting into the basic, you know, the, the very shallowest parts of the functionality here, and we won't get too deep in this course, um, but we'll continue on with some other examples in the following sections. So in this section, we're just going to introduce uh, conditionals, and conditionals are um, if statements and they use if then else and fi keywords and the conditions will go into spare square brackets and we'll, we'll look at an example of this in a second <clears throat> but I just wanted to highlight that um, the operators that you're going to use in statements like this and, and any of the scripts um, within bash are slightly different than operators that you might be familiar with from other programming languages uh, in Bash, they are all uh, letter coded, uh, whereas typically in a coding language, you would see things uh, that are mathematical symbols. Um, so just be aware of that. We'll have we have a copy of this uh, in the, the text reference so that you could print it off if you so desired. But let's go ahead and look at some actual code here. Um, we're still in our bin directory, and now we have a script called Tall Enough. And we see it starts with a typical um, hash bang bin bash uh, line. And then it asks you, it, it echoes the text, how many inches tall are you? Um, so this is seeing if you're tall enough to get on a ride. Uh, hopefully this doesn't bring home, bring back any child traumatic childhood memories for anybody. Um, now, then we have the, the read line, and it's looking for user input. So the user would say, well, I'm this tall. Uh, and in this case, now we have the conditional statement. So it starts with if, and then in the square brackets um, is the condition. So it's saying height, your variable, uh, in, in quotes, is GT. And do you remember what GT was from the, the table we just looked at? I'll give you a second. Okay. Maybe you scrolled back and looked it up, it's greater than. Um, they're basically sh shortening for the actual words, so they're pretty easy to remember. Um, in this case, we're going to use 45 as our cutoff, and then we go very much like many other programming languages in terms of structure. We have the if, then, else, and then finish. Um, so if your height is greater than 45, you echo a, a, a response, which is you may get on the ride. Um, if you are shorter than that, you don't meet the condition, then you get, you're too short for this ride, and, and the script finishes up. So let's try it out. How tall are you? Hmm. Let's see, today I'm feeling tall. Let's say, uh, Three inches. You may get on the ride. Yes. Let's, let's see if we're uh, feeling a little bit short. Let's say we're 30. Let's run it. It's asking me again. 36. Too short. Ah, oh, bummer. Um, 
again, very simplistic little script, but uh, again, just another step in you help having an understanding of uh, the things that Bash can do, and we're getting more and more complex as, as we go through this. Um, so again, uh, you're going to need to get used to the operators being a little bit different, uh, but you can certainly take this sort of a, a you know file as a template and mess around with it and try it out for yourself. All right, next we're going to look at curly brace expansion. And now this is, uh, initially it's going to seem pretty trivial, uh, but it really is a pretty powerful uh, feature in Bash. So if we wanted to just uh, print out a series of numbers, we could go echo one, two, three in curly braces, and it will just spit those out. What curly brace expansion does is it fills in that middle number. So we can go... Uh, Go one, two, three. We can just put a couple of dots here. And you get the same result. Not very interesting. Well, let's try something a little bit more interesting. Let's say we go one to negative three. Now it's going backwards for one, um, but it's also now giving you a greater number of very, of, of numbers in between, right? It's, it's filling in the, the space, basically. We can do this also with, with uh, letters. Well, that wasn't very exciting. Let's try something further down the pipe. There we go. Um, the whole al alphabet. Now, Okay, great. So we're able to spit out a series of numbers or letters in series um, and automate that. Maybe nifty, maybe not so much, but let's take a look at what would happen if we pasted this into a little script. Now, I've already copied this from my clipboard. Um, the, the actual script is in the text file that accompanies this uh, video lecture, so you can go and check it out yourself if you want to just copy and paste it. Um, in this case, we're going to look at a series from 1 to 12, and it's going to loop through it. So we're, we're actually doing some work here. Uh, not very much work, but it's still work. And now you see the output is put on uh, separate lines rather than all in one line, because we're not just giving you a standard output. We're actually doing work. So it's looping through uh, this little script that we used. So I would encourage you to go and, and play around with what happens when you do different numbers and uh, combine numbers and letters and things like that to just get a feel for what this, this does. A couple more examples that start perhaps getting a little bit more interesting. Um, you can, say, tie a variable to a series of numbers. And you could even put another variable in the back here. Echo, and it's spitting out this this pair of variables, but it's incrementing the number, so that's potentially uh, useful. Now, you don't have to necessarily. You're not just limited to doing um, um, series. You can also define. Uh, you know, some of the the numbers in the series might be uh, different. And then let's go and do a curly brace expansion here. And see what that looks like. So A, B, C, we're left alone. Now we have D, 1, 2, and 3, and an E. Um, so again, doesn't doesn't need to be uniform. You can modify certain parts of, of that. Um, and you should also consider that uh, you can do any sort of text. Now, the, the expansion itself maybe uh, isn't going to work on something like this, but if you go some function, um, and let's see, we're going to have, we have two different names, and we want to create some files which are similar have, have a similar base, but are uh, slightly different. There we've just created two, two text files um, that have 
different names. Now you could do something like this with numbers. You, you could have blah, one, two, three, four, five, right? So hopefully you're starting to see some of the possibilities um, that text expansion, a very, very simple sort of concept, um, but as you start adding layers, it can be, get more and more complex. Uh, and certainly uh, this is as an intro, getting you aware of this, uh, do check out the reference that we have with the, the text uh, notes that accompany this lecture. So a bash command that you will certainly be using after finishing this class is the cat command, which is short for concatenate. Um, and it certainly is able to put two files together, concatenate them, um, but it has a lot of other fu functionality in terms of file manipulation. So let's look at uh, some of those options. Um, often, if you're going to create a file, you might create it first using the touch command or something like that, uh, and then go in with a text editor and actually create the file itself. Cat um, can actually let you do it. It's it's not the most versatile in terms of actually then being able to go around and edit things, but if you just need to create a simple file uh, with some basic text to it, this is, this is a fine way to do it. Um, and you would cat greater than and a uh, the, the name of the file. So, but just so no smoke and mirrors kind of thing. Let's let's look at what's in this directory first. Uh, and actually, I want to get rid of that test file because that's what I was going to create. Um, so, okay. So test is gone. Now let's go ahead and create that with a cat command. So cat greater than test. And now you are actually in a mode where you're able to enter some. Uh, some data. So let's say hello world. And then you will control D to escape that. And it seems that with a Mac, you need to do that twice. And back to our mind. Now let's LS again. And there's test. Now the second and probably the most common thing that you do with a cat command is just get it to print a standard output. Say what, what is in that file. So now if we go cat test, there it is, hello world. And if we were to open up an editor, same thing. All right, so that, that works. Let's get out of here. Oops. All right, um, so we've created a file. We have looked at the contents. Um, you can actually take the contents of one file and direct it into another file. So uh, the w one thing to be aware of is if you create a file that already exists or you redirect the standard output into a file that name that already exists, it will overwrite that file. So just make sure that you're pushing that data where you want it to go. So in this case, we can see we have a test, test one, test two, test three. Let's go ahead and create a test four. Um, so in this case, we can go cat and let's take our test file greater than, and let's shoot over into a test4.txt. So we've created that file. Let's cat text for, test4. And again, hello world. So in this case, we took uh, an existing file, created a new file, gave it a new name, uh, and it just simply copied over the, the, the data that we had in that first file. Uh, another thing that you can do is append or concatenate two files together. So let's take a look at uh, test one. Let's cat that. It says hello world. Uh, let's go ahead and remove test one. I hope everybody's following along and getting some experience with this. And let's create a new test one. So let's cat greater than test one. And again, now we can type in what we want. And let's just say hello. Control D to escape. Control D again, because I'm using a Mac. And let's cat that to make sure we got it right. All right, there's hello. Now let's check what test2.txt is all about. world and we want to concatenate those two so what's going to happen is we're going to say cat and we want to use test2 because we're going to add it to the end of test1 
Uh, and in this case, we're going to do two um, greater than signs. And now test one is where we want to append it to. If we list, see, there are all the files are still there. But let's cat test one and see what happened. And we added world in a new line uh, to test one. So we've, we've combined those two files. And you could actually do that with, with multiple files. So you could cat uh, test one, test two dot text. And we could shoot that into a new file called test five. We cat test five. We can see hello world, um, which was the test one, and we've combined that test two got added to the bottom of that, which was that second world. So um, this is, uh, you know, with all of these commands, we're not getting too deep with it, but really this is the basic functionality you're probably going to see uh, and and use most frequently. We again, you know, I, with, as with all of these commands, there's more. Feel free to check out the manual pages um, and and really dive deep in these things. So in this module, we're going to look at the here command. And uh, it's used to create a here doc or document or a here file. And this is simply a redirection, an IO redirection, that is telling the Bash shell to, to keep reading the input from the source uh, until it hits a, uh, an, an end tag, a delimiting tag. So you're starting and ending with a delimiting tag. Let's, to look, let's take a look at what um, kind of the basic syntax is. I'm just going to get this on the new line here um, and you would have a command uh, you're going to end up with two left arrows and some sort of string now this is typically going to be all caps uh, you want to pick something ideally that isn't found elsewhere in your code um, it doesn't have to be but it's helpful to have it be unique uh, typically all caps and um, you're going to end up with this now then processing this command on some line. So you can have text, uh, a couple of lines of text that are being processed in some fashion. And then finally, you're going to close this out with the exact same tag. So exactly this word is, needs to be here. There can't be any spaces before or after it. Um, there can't be any other words on that line. Otherwise, it's not going to be treated as this end of file tag. Um, so now we return and it actually closes out and finishes the, that process. Just copied and we'll paste uh, another cat file here, so or another here file. Uh, in this case, we're going to concatenate it into a new file. And this is really one of the things that I use this most often for. Um, this way you don't have to run touch and then open a text editor and, and paste some text in there. Um, you can basically do it all in one go. So in this case, we're saying, hey, um, concatenate this, throw this into this new file here, uh, the little script file. Uh, here again, we have our little starting tag. And in this case, notice that the we have single uh, quotes around it. And what this is saying is don't do anything to this. Don't treat this as, uh, don't, don't do any processing on it. Don't do any uh, replacement of variables, any string expansion, none of that. Just treat it as the string that you see here, and in this case, put this into the into the here now .sh file, uh, and then finally we want to end it up with eof, and this is saying this is the end of the code block. So now hit return, and we should have a here now uh, script sitting there. Run that, and indeed we have all the bits and pieces. There are the variables, and the variables were not replaced by anything. Um, they're sitting there, and now we should be able to run this. And there you go. Okay, so I've grabbed uh, another bit of code, which I'm going to paste here, and we'll, we'll run through it. In this case, what we've done is, again, we've done the cat command. Um, here's our starting here file tag. It's saying pump this over into 
uh, this new file rsg.sh, slightly different syntax uh, than the previous example I showed you, but this is really now where all of this stuff on one line isn't part of the, the actual content yet. So here's where we start our content on the next line. We've got the, the starting script indicator. Uh, we've got a couple variables. And then here, actually, we have yet another here file. So we've got a here file within a here file. And what this should have done is taken all of this content. Again, we have those single uh, quotations around the, the initial starting tag. Um, and so it should, should have taken all of this and thrown it into this rhg.sh. So let's take a quick look at it. And in indeed, we here we have the EOF. We have not replaced any of the variables. And there's the final EOF on this, this little um, here, here, here file. So let's go ahead and run it and see if it actually works. And yes, indeed, ready, set, go. And um, once again, this is just literally the tip of the iceberg on this. This is a super powerful uh, tool. I use it all the time to, uh, you know, both interactively and programmatically uh, create new files and, and populate them or, or push information around. Um, so really a handy tool. I encourage you to check out both the uh, little supplementary material that we have for for this lecture and the, the following text-based content, um, but also just explore it more. Uh, I think you'll get a lot of use out of this command. Okay, regular expressions in about five minutes. This is going to be challenging because this is truly a powerful tool within the bat uh, within the bash toolbox. Um, a, a regular expression is really a set of um, characters that you can search for. And typically you're looking for um, doing text searches or string manipulation. And uh, you can look for a, a complete absolute string like a word or you can look for um, you know part of a, a, a series. So uh, within a regex you have the, the actual characters that have their literal meaning. Um, there are some additional mo uh, modifying characters that might say, uh, hey, look at the beginning or end of a line. Uh, and then there are modifiers that sort of act like wild cards as one example. So lots of different things that you can do in terms of defining how you end up uh, or what exactly you're looking for. Uh, if you've never seen a reg X, um, here's an example. Now this might seem like what is this? It's a bunch of zeros and nines and brackets. But now if you look closely, there's a set of zero, three zeros and nines, and then there's a dash. There's another two zeros and nine, through nines, and then another dash, and then there's four. And if you can think of something that has that structure, I'll give you a minute, you might come up with the answer, a social security number. And what this is saying is that every zero or nine could be any digit from zero to nine. Uh, in the, this case, you've got a series of three, a dash, a series of two, a dash, and a series of four. Now, you could imagine very easily how you might then want to look for, say, a phone number. Uh, and maybe you have to put some parentheses characters in there uh, to make it formatted correctly for how you're displaying phone numbers. Um, you might put in uh, an at symbol and an ampersand and a, and a dot uh, and start looking for email addresses. So hopefully this starts your mind thinking about how you might put this to use. But let's go ahead and um, look at a few examples of what you could do with this. And in, in this, is, this is one module where I really encourage you to take a look at the uh, text documentation. I've put some exercises and examples. There's some files that you can use um, to work through this. And really, within our kind of module limit of about five minutes. I don't want to kind of bore you to death. This is really something we're getting hands on is going to be much better than me um, rattling on about it. But let's look at some examples of what you can do with this. Um, so let's say we just wanted to look for a, well, let, let's look at the file first. I've got a uh, bit of Shakespeare here for you. Uh, 
and this is uh, from Titus Andronicus. We've got a few characters. There's Chiron, Demetrius, and Aaron. Um, let's say we wanted to look for when Chiron speaks. It's probably Chiron. Probably me like that. So you basically say grep. Grep is just a utility that allows you to look for um, things in files. Uh, Chiron is going to be our uh, search term, and then ta.md is the file that uh, we're looking for. And you could actually put a, an absolute or relative path to that, but we happen to be in the directory, so we can just give the file name. So there we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 times when Chiron is uh, mentioned or, or is speaking. Um, one thing to realize is that it can be very spe specific in terms of what you're looking for. So if we spelled it like this, what would we get? Nothing, um, because it's not spelled like that anywhere within uh, within the text. However, you can use um, brackets to give you an example. And now we don't care how that last N looks like, and this should give us Chiron again, because in this case, the brackets are saying look for uppercase or lowercase, uh, and sort of like the brackets in the social security number, we're looking for any digit from 0 to 9. Um, I mentioned that we can look at uh, finding characters or, or regular expressions, phrases, at uh, the beginning of end of a line, for example. So we could go... Um, And the little caret sign will give us the beginning of a line. Uh, and then I think. location matters. Um, so here, and, and you will notice now, we didn't just get the word the. In this case, it only what we're saying is we want the to be the first three letters in the line. So this includes then, they, and I think there's a couple theirs in there towards the end. Um, so there are ways to restrict that to say, I just want to look at the word the specifically with no other characters. Um, so again, I don't, I don't want to drag this on too far, but hopefully you can see uh, some examples of how you can start varying the expression uh, to start looking for the sorts of things where and what you are looking for uh, in, in a file. Uh, and like I said, absolutely, this is something that's super powerful. It probably deserves a class of its own, but this is just a quick introduction. And I really encourage you to check out the, the text content with this module in particular uh, and give this a try yourself.